Hello, how's it going Grim Darkers? Kravehammer here. In this tutorial we will be working in a gritty and dark Necrons, more specifically the Necron Overlord. This time the tutorial will be a bit longer as I want to let you see very precisely how I work and also to demonstrate some of the methods I very commonly use. These techniques and the team itself can be applied to all of your Necrons models. So let's get on with the show. We begin with the base and the primer done using Vallejo Black Primer. After the primer I have done a very quick layer with Vallejo Burnt Iron of Camera. You can either try press or air press the color on. The emphasis on the base layer is to keep it thin and just to give it a very subtle metallic look. We start off by stippling a warlock bronze with a small dry brush. Dab the brush over the blades hanging from the neck. You can be pretty rough uh, with application. Continue dabbing over the neck orifices and the shoulder pads. The idea is to give it a spotted unfinished look to emphasize a gritty look. Work the loin blading and the crown with the same effect. Next we are stippling with Rune Lord Brass. Go over the area stippled with Warblock Bronze, focusing on giving it a bit brighter look but not covering the whole armor. To give the model a bit ma more majestic look, we stipple the crown, chest markings and the loose plating with Retributor armor mixed with Sandry dust. Use only a very slight amount of Sandry dust as we want to dull down the gold effect but still retain the distinct look of golden metallics. And do not forget to paint the weapon as I did using Warblock Bronze.
For the armor itself, we use Vallejo aluminum. Uh, alu uh, did I pronounce that right? Oh. Anyway, Vallejo aluminum stippled with a dry brush. This paint is really bright, so be certain to wipe off any excess paint on a tissue or a piece of paper carefully before dapping over the metallic parts. The idea is to pick the parts that would most reflect the ambient light, almost like a sanital type of approach. You can be quite rough about the application, but try and not overdo the bright effect. For a unifying wash, we go over the whole model with AK Interactive Dark Brown Wash. This is an enamel wash, so we will need Q-tips and white spirits or odorless tinner to clean up the model. After the model is not visibly wet anymore, we come with a Q-tip dipped in odorless tinner. Dab the Q-tip over the model carefully, as the acrylic layers may come off if too much pressure is applied. Sweeping motion tends to cause more mechanical duress on the layers, so dabbing is advised. You can use a soft brush to use on more difficult to, re uh, to reach areas. You can control the amount of dustiness and dirt of the wash by how much you remove. My necrons are quite ancient, so I tend to leave a bit more of the wash on the model this time around. After the model is dry, we come with a stippling round of Runelord brass again. The armor plating should look pretty grimy at this point, so even a slight dab with a dry brush should be enough. Idea is to have some of the bare metallic show underneath the heavy use and weathering of the armor, so apply only small amounts to bring a nice effect, like a highlight. And here I am like a champion and remembering to stipple on the weapon also. Thank you. 
After the brass stippling, we come over the metallics with aluminium again. Same rule applies here as it did in the previous application of the paint. Stipple the aluminium scarcely over the selected points carefully. Rule of the thumb is to have less than more, as you can always come back and add more paint if you want, but removing it at this point is more difficult. Using the same mix of Retributor armor and Sundry Dust we did earlier, stipple the golden parts of the armor. Because the gold effect is a bit more dull, it gives a nice weathered look but still retains a majestic feel to it. Work the blade, the crown or helmet or whatever it is, and the chest markings. To bring more interesting weathering to the model, we add some verdigris on the gold bits. I am using a very thinned wash of turquoise lights from Abteilung 502. This is an oil paint that needs diluting with white spirits, but if working with oils is not your specialty, you can use Nihilac Oxide from Citadel. Apply a generous wash over the gold bits and dab with Q-tip to remove the excess. This way the verdigris, uh, verdigris, oh, sorry for the pronouncing, verdigris will sit more on the crevices and looks much more natural. Because our Necron Overlord has seen some rough places, uh, we add slight amount of riser rust from Citadel uh, to show how corrosion has started to settle in a bit. My technique is to add some incoherent patterns and wipe most of it off with a Q-tip. This will leave a nice amount uh, on the model, but not overdoing it. I didn't want the crowns to be uh, kind of like rust buckets.
For the sickly green glow effects, we airbrush a mix of Sons of Horror green and Skarsnik green one to one. The glow effect should be rather subtle, so I am blasting it on the blade quite carefully, focusing more on the circles on the blade. Add the same effect on the shoulder pads and on the fist he is holding. Using pure Skarsnik green, airbrush a small amount focusing on the center of the circles on the blade and the shoulder orbs. Try to keep it subtle again, leaving it more transparent than giving a full layer. Right, for the highlight of the glow effect uh, we mix Skarsnik green 2 to 1 with pure white. Add 1 to 2 drops of acrylic medium over the mix until it is more of a glaze and do a pin wash on the crevices. Once the pin wash dries up it will be a bit more darker than when applied, so don't be fooled with it. Keep a q-tip around to fix any mistakes as this part requires quite a steady hand. The final highlight pin wash will be done with pure white mixed with scarlet green. I am using a 2 to 1 or even a 3 to 1 mix, keeping white much more dominant. Add 2 drops of acrylic medium to this mix to make it really runny and go over the crevices. Again, keep a q-tip around to remove any overlap, as we want to keep this paint in the recesses. It's extremely difficult to do pin washes on the camera, so that's why you see me fumbling all the time. But the good thing is that it's easy to clean up.
And there we go, the mighty Necron Overlord is nearly complete. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please consider subscribing and hit that like button. You can see what I'm working on at Instagram Grave.hammer and Facebook Gravehammer Miniatures. Happy Wargaming, have fun painting and as always, stay grim dark.